It's been two years since our little blue devil Sonic appeared in the small Montana town of Green Hills, and now his arch nemesis Dr. Robotnik returns from the Mushroom World, but this time he isn't alone. I'm Nars and this is IGN's Fan Fest. I am so excited to interview the cast and crew of Sonic 2, but we put some feelers out for Die Hard questions and we got some incredible ones. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Of course. Thanks for having us. Hi, uh, this is Jeff Fowler. I'm the director of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Hey, my name is Ben Schwartz. I play Sonic in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Hey everyone, I'm James Marsden and I play Tom in Sonic 2. Hello, I'm Colleen O'Shaughnessy and I play Tails in Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, our first question to Jeff. Uh, you spoke about the bigger scope of Sonic 2 in comparison to the first movie. Obviously, we have more characters, Tails and Knuckles, but you also spoke, you also spoken about uh, bigger action, bigger set pieces. How do you balance the scope from a personal perspective and then kind of build on those moments with every individual character? Uh, I mean, that's just the that's the trick is is trying to balance it all because we have uh, an embarrassment of riches. I mean, there's so much great material to pull from. Thirty years this, uh, Sonic's been around. There's so many great characters, so many great worlds. Um, but yeah, it, that's kind of just the the movie making process is just trying to figure out the right proportions um, of the action, the humor, and the heart. Um, but I, I think just speaking for how we approach these movies, I, I don't think anyone ever came out of a, a movie theater and said, you know what? That movie had too much heart. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, there's a real turnoff. Uh, these emotions. I, I, so I, uh, I think we always work really hard on the script uh, to have that heart in there. And then once the, the cast comes in, they do a great job. I mean, perfect example is our, our rowboat scene. Those kind of scenes are, are really uh, their importance cannot be uh, overstated. So yeah, it's uh, but the action is fun too. So it's a big movie and it's got uh, more of, of all the stuff everyone loves from the first film. Now Ben, without giving away any spoilers, <laughs> have those changes impacted how Sonic is portrayed or would you say there's like significant character development in Sonic from one and two? Oh, uh, I think there. I think there is actually great uh, character development. I think that Jeff and and um, and the writers did an incredible job in that uh, Sonic has some place to grow. So Sonic has uh, with with the scale. Uh, Sonic has um, new ambitions and things like that. So it's really fun to get to play that. So kind of the arc of the the first one is this. Um, little kid that doesn't have any friends trying to find a place to belong and find a family and then the second one has a different kind of arc for uh sonic which i'm not gonna say to not give anything away but it's really lovely and it goes into what jeff said i think you can have all this action which they do so well you can have all this comedy which is so fun um, but when you have the heart and when you care about what happens to your characters i think that's when the movie goes from good to great and and jeff is incredible at that um so we have a whole a whole bunch of that you ben said it perfectly if you, if no matter how much action you have, if you don't care about the characters, then all that action is kind of kind of meaningless. It has no stakes. So, uh, as we bring in these new great characters like Tails and Knuckles, we, we're going to work really hard to make sure that the audience cares about them, um, and then and then has a great time with them, you know, for two hours. Speaking of bringing in new characters, Jeff, the movie so far is keeping up with the game's timeline, the original Sonic, and now Sonic 2 with Tails' introduction, and obviously Knuckles who came in Sonic 3, but we have him here in this movie. Are there any specific set pieces, levels, designs, etc., from Sonic 2 and 3, the games, that you wanted to pull for the sequel? Oh yeah, all, all, all kinds. And, and, and one of them was in the trailer, of course, the biplane, uh, the tornado. It's such an iconic visual um, from Sonic 2. And so uh, as we were sort of setting out to plot Sonic 2, I, I think we all got really excited about just just pulling that, that great sort of imagery that all the fans are gonna get excited about when they see it on the big screen and just creating a real cinematic version of, of the stuff that, that fans uh, have loved, you know, from, from, from Sonic 1, from Sonic 2. Uh, and, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's a great problem to have that there's so many great Easter eggs to kind of incorporate, uh, and, and this movie is chock full of them. I, I couldn't even uh, begin to list them because there's just so so much stuff fans get excited about. Do you think Tom thinks of Sonic as a son or as a best friend or friend? That's a great question. Um, I think the beginning of the first film, obviously, and all throughout the first film, it was it was a friendship. It was a it was a buddy road trip, you know. And but I think their relationship continues to evolve into this second movie. When you know Sonic 
is is part of the family now. He's moved in and and um, and he's getting a little too big for his britches and maybe a bit ahead of his skis a little bit. And he needs somebody to kind of come in and um, you know uh, maybe I think it's something that like yes, it's starting to evolve into more of a parental uh, relationship. Whether Tom's aware of it or not, I think Tom's just trying to be a good you know, supportive presence for him and to, to like, like any father would sort of guide him through life and, and let him re reassure him that he's going to have his time and there'll be a reason for him to, you know, to be using all these powers that he feels like he's not allowed to use. So yeah, I, I think obviously there, it, the, you know, it began as a friendship, but it continues to evolve into, yes, uh, I think um, more of a sort of father-son sort of relationship dynamic. And again, like whether Tom's aware of it or not, um, you know, he's just trying to be a good guy for the kid. Has the introduction of Tails and Knuckles, who obviously share similarities with Sonic, has that impacted your approach to voicing the characters? The idea that now we get to see Sonic with a sidekick for the first time, someone that is a sycophant, someone that looks up to him, is so exciting. And then um, someone that's uh, more powerful than him um, becomes ex extremely exciting too. So I think you get to see different shades of uh, what Sonic's like. You know, I don't. I think I approach Tails the same way every time, whether it was for the show or the games. Um, I think the difference here is that it's more the beginning of the relationship, um, and we're establishing you know, getting to know each other and learning who Tails is, learning who Sonic is with this little buddy. Um, and, you know, it's such a collaborative effort when you work on a, anything. Um, so I get lots of guidance from Jeff and the writers. And um, so uh, I think I approach it the same way, though. Mario might make a movie or is making a movie that's coming out soon. Is there anything Sonic would like to say to his longtime rival? Ooh. Oh Contro man, this could be controversial. Careful, Ben. <laughs> yeah, for real. By the way, am I allowed to say anything? <laughs> yeah. Can I say something, Jeff? Then you can tell me if I can't say it. Uh, <laughs> just go for it. Just what does your heart tell you? My heart says, "Smash, Smash Brothers Initiative." Terribly, Polly C asks James a friend question: Has working with CG characters affected your approach? to acting, are you able to improvise on lines or actions? To be honest with you, it's strange to act with real people anymore, for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the future, it is the most COVID safe, COVID friendly way to, to, uh, to shoot a film. Um, I've done a couple of films uh, that are this model, which is a mix of live action and animation, and um, been very lucky to sort of <laughs> <laughs> figure it out along the way um, you know it's definitely technical like you you know you have to kind of map everything out before you have to have a clear understanding of what the scenes about you know and uh, Ben and I've gotten to be you know very close much closer than he felt comfortable with um, as mm -hmm. friends <laughs> during this process but it was important because they were shooting all of my stuff first and and then you know it'd be sent back to Ben and he would have to kind of fill in the gaps so we got a good sense of uh, each other's, you know, sense of humor and sensibilities, and and um, you know, so that's that's always a good thing. I think that's really important to know. You know, if I come up with something on the day, you asked about like improvisation. You know, I know I got to know that Ben's gonna understand what I'm doing or where I'm going with it. You know, the animators come in and do their thing with Sonic, but but if but if the if the cast if they're not sort of making the scene feel real or the 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 uh, you know the conversation between Sonic and Tom, that just if it, if it feels, uh, if you feel the technical nature of it, then it's just not going to work. And, and James has always just given us such great material to, to work with, and, and the animators, uh, you know, then, then come in and, and, and put it all together. But uh, but yeah, it, it's incredibly challenging. So it's it's one of those things that, that I cannot say enough uh, wonderful things about James right. and, and all the cast because everyone <laughs> everyone has to deal with that that same technical challenge. It is a challenge and. These days, especially, we are alone. We have a voice in our head, and that's directing us. And then, uh, oh, the microphone. So it's it is. It's challenging. We don't have makeup. We don't have costumes. We don't have sets. We don't have props. We, you know, so you have to create everything with just your voice coming through a microphone. You don't even have your face. So um, it is. It's it's challenging, but it's something that you know. It's a skill that you can develop, and all those acting 101, you know, sticking points. They're, they're there, you know, who are you talking to? What's the situation? 
um, you know, what in this situation, what would this character do? Where has he been? Where is he going? Who's he talking to? So, um, you know, you got to hang on to all those acting chops from a million years ago and just throw them into the ether. What about you, Ben? Uh, first of all, way easier to not have James there. Uh, it's a waste of time to have him around me. So way that. easier to do without him. Absolute <laughs> piece of garbage. Like, uh, you know, bologna sandwich, no bread, uh, no condiments. Uh, like acting with styrofoam. So for me to do it by myself is a huge, huge help. Uh, but I will say, so I've been doing voiceover since 2005. So 17, oh my goodness, I'm getting so old. So like 17 years. And the thing that I've learned from deciphering between the two is that exactly what Colleen said, and Colleen is obviously a hero of this, um, uh, of, of the Sonic franchise in every form, um, is that because you don't see our faces, and even though sometimes they put dots on my face and they put a bunch of cameras there, you have to act out what your face is kind of doing. You almost have to give it a little bit more. You almost have to uh, like, to give the animator something to play with or to kind of give them a path and what you're feeling and emoting, uh, it's, it's a skill set. It's a, it's a really uh, interesting and wonderful skill set. Colleen, I have a question, fan question from Remy the Chipmunk. Having voiced Tales for numerous IP, what was it like stepping back into this role again? Stepping into Tales is really comfortable for me. I just love him to pieces and I've been doing I think I've been voicing him for seven, maybe eight years now. So I I can easily step into those shoes. This was definitely a different experience as far as, you know, it, it was a more grounded performance. Um, there are definite moments in the film that are different than what Tails has experienced before. Um, but I, I do, I feel very comfortable. I just love him so much. He's this, this, this little piece of me right here that um, I can just, you know, pick him up and off we go. Stacey wants to know, how did you land the role of Sonic? It kind of started at the very beginning. I had a meeting with Tim Miller, who's a producer on this movie. I had it with something else. And right next to him at Blur was Jeff Fowler. And they said, we're going to go out with, um, uh, we're going to go out with Sonic because it didn't have a home yet. And they were telling me about it. And I told them how much, you know, I love voiceover and told them about the stuff I was doing. And they said, maybe one day we'll have you help out a little bit. And so they called me to do just a test scene, which is a five minute scene that Jeff was gonna direct, that was uh, eventually gonna go out to all the studios, and then if the studios liked it, they would hopefully say we do Sonic. And it was kind of like a freebie deal, and that I was told that, you know, it doesn't mean you're gonna be the person, uh, just would you help us out and do us a favor. And I love the IP so much, and I love the character so much that I said, yes, of course. And we did it, and Jeff did an incredible job making that um, test video, and if, if it wasn't incredible, he wouldn't have been able to uh, do it. And then Paramount bought it, and then I think they went through the process of uh, maybe going through the very famous people of who maybe could take on Sonic. And they kept going back to that. They kept going back to that test scene, right, Jeff? Yep. And then we had it right, and then, we had it right the end, from the start. And when I did it, he loved the way I delivered it and felt like that's the way that Sonic in the film should be delivered. And then I remember I waited, man, like eight months or something. And then they finally, I got a phone call from Jeff. I knew exactly the street I was on in Burbank. I was just doing a VO thing and I was coming off and he told me while I was walking down, I know the sidewalk I was on when he finally said, you're going to be Sonic. And I was like, I did that ER move at the beginning of ER where he goes on his knee and he goes like this <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the opening sequence in ER. I was so excited. There was no money at the beginning. It was just a favor, but I believed in Jeff and I loved the project so much that I would do whatever they wanted. And it ended up that they had uh, given me an incredible opportunity afterwards. So our final fan question comes from Elfon at TV and Elfon wants to ask Jeff, Jeff, are we gonna see a Sonic 3? Nothing would make me happier. We have such a great time making these movies. Uh, I think everyone just loves the world, loves the characters. Um, but right now we're just, uh, you know, we're kind of going uh, one movie at a time. So fingers crossed, uh, uh, you know, uh, everybody comes out and has a great time with, with this sequel. And then, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll get to do more. Now, you may have noticed that we're missing the two villains of the Sonic sequel, Dr. Robotnik and Knuckles. They couldn't be here for the panel, but Jim Carrey and Idris Elba want to answer your fan questions. So here's what they had to say. IGN, what's up? It's Idris Elba, and this is from Blair Witch Hunt. And their question was, what personal touches did I bring to my character Knuckles? Um, well, the personal touches that I try to bring is, I guess, a sense of humor. Uh, he's, uh, you know, you know me, I'm, I'm known for being hilarious. But 
uh, Knuckles definitely isn't. So, you know, in the recording of my character, I would just bring some oddities to him in his personality. He was like, he wouldn't design, he didn't think he was saying funny stuff, but we would just encourage him to say stuff that just sounded funny and sounded so serious. So, um, there's like one scene, I can't tell you too much about it, but he talks about ice cream and he talks about ice cream pretty seriously. Anyway, that was sort of my personal touch is trying to bring and inject a little humor. Thanks for that question. Much love, can't wait to see the movie. I have a question here from someone in the ether. Why do you think Dr. Robotnik's character is such a good fit for you? How does he compare to other wacky characters you've played in your career? I think Robotnik is the perfect fit for me because I am a master of playing people who are filled with self-loathing and who compensate for it with a veneer of total confidence and even an air of superiority. And so when I get that call, I'll be there. Yes, sir. I'll be in the way. Bad guys yell when they're being thwarted. I'll be in the way kids laugh when they want a new Jim Carrey movie and they hear Sonic 2's on the TV. And when the people are eating the popcorn they made and playing video games in the circle of friends they built online. I'll be there too. Scene.